definition that I offered to them, and I'll give you the, the long version. One aspect of the mind, not subjective experience and not awareness, which no one can define, but let's just make sure we say, those are parts of the mind too. We're gonna to get to thought in just a moment. Um, so one aspect of the mind, because of course the mind has thoughts, feelings, intentions, beliefs, attitudes, hopes, dreams, wishes, longings, for sure. All of that we experience in subjective experience. But one, one aspect of the mind can be defined as an embodied, meaning it's not just in the skull, but it's throughout the whole body, and relational, whether it's your relationship to other people or the planet, an embodied and relational, self-organizing, emergent process, which I'm going to define in a moment, that regulates the flow of energy and information. So to say it really simply, it's an embodied and relational process that emerges from relationships and the embodied brain. And in this emergence, it's doing something called self-organization. And self-organization is just a term straight out of the mathematics of something called complex systems, where you can actually study how the interaction of elements of a system gives rise to a property, in this case it's called self-organization, and what self-organization does is it regulates the thing that's the essence of the system. In this case, this triangle becomes energy and information flow. Flow being defined as the movement across time. Energy we've defined, well we haven't defined it, we've given examples, a physicist would say that energy is the capacity to do stuff, sometimes work, sometimes not. So basically this becomes a triangle of energy and information flow. And to be very uh, specific about it, that's the system we're looking at. So a relationship is the sharing of that flow. The brain is the embodied mechanism of that flow. And arising in a self-organizational process is the mind. Now, this has huge implications because once you say that the mind is regulatory, then you have some really incredible opportunities to um, do something intentionally to create a healthier mind. See, before, when it was just as, because I'm also trained as a biologist, and we say, oh, you know, the, the brain gives rise to the mind, oh well, let's study the brain, which is why brain scientists get so much fame, and they get so much money, and they get so much lab space, because we all had this feeling like, oh, the brain's the source of everything. It's not that simple. And believe me, I get in lots of fights with brain scientists who don't like this thinking, because they want to think, you know, you, first of all, they want to think that you, the brain is the whole thing, but also they want to think that you own your mind. But it's a very um, insular kind of way of picturing what mental life is. So we're saying it's an embodied and relational, with that being a huge term, relational. So it's not just with other people. It can be, as I said, with the planet. So an embodied and relational, and here's the key thing, it's a self-organizing, which has a whole science to it. Well, self-protecting would be a part of adaptation, for sure, and we'll talk about that. Self-organizing, emergent, these are just the scientific terms, process. So this is, this is something that um, becomes crucial, and then we have a self-organizing process, and what does it do? It's regulating, this is the key thing. Regulating energy and information flow. Now, when I was teaching in England and in Holland,